here is a full boot construction of HS402 to channel Android oscilloscope based on STM32 Black Peel development board. First of all, let's look at the electrical circuit. We can see similar schematic for both channels. Resistors divide input signal. Solid state relay is using for shortcut capacitor for DC AC set. Programmable operation amplifier gain input signal. Switching diodes protect analog input against over and under voltage. Regulator 1.2 volts is using for get 1.65 volts. It's half of 3.3 uh, volts for virtual ground. There are a few options for power supply. First option is using on board regulator. On uh, mine it's uh, AP7343D. I will use this option. Second option is using common linear regulator AMC1117 3.3 volts if supply voltage is 5 volts or more. Third option is using pretty expensive and rare regulator TPS73733 from Texas Instruments in 3.0 version or much more common and cheap RT9193 in 3.1 version if you want supply device from rechargeable battery. The list of components is available in document. Notice that uh, C8 and uh, C9 47 microfarad capacitors uh, may be hard to find, so you can just replace them with 10 microfarad. The main component is microcontroller module uh, Black Pill. You can buy cheaper STM32 F401 or more powerful STM32 F411. The last one can work on higher frequency 100 MHz while the first 84 MHz. So with the first one you will get a little more wider bandwidth and higher sampling rate. You can solder development board directly, but I strongly recommend use PBS connector due to easy connection and disconnection. The two layer printed circuit board available for download from GitHub page. This is a zip account with Gerber files that you can just upload on PCB factory site. The last version is 3.1, but I have previous version 3.0, so we need only main part of the board. Wi-Fi module will be attached in the next part. Before soldering I have to coat parts with solder, but you can use special solder paste. When SMD components is installed, mount them by using hot air gun, then mount uh, THT components with soldering iron. Of course you can use soldering iron for both types of components. Thoroughly inspect board soldering quality and check components value. No that if you use option 1 short J1 jumper to use on board regulator. To check properly work of power supply, connect module with USB-C cable to USB port. The LED on the board will be glow. Additionally, check input voltage 5 volts and output voltage 3.3 volts. It's good. There are several ways to flash firmware into your controller. I will show all of them, but the easiest way for you is using uh, first method. The firmware file of the oscilloscope you can get on the GitHub page. It's a binary file. Also, you can find this in the description. If your hobby is D electronics, you probably have USB COM converter. It can be CP, FTDI, PL, CH or another. I have the last one. So, why STM32 module and CH340 module according to the wire diagram? Check circuit again and connect it to the Android phone. Where should be installed STM32 utils application? Enter in microcontroller's load mode. To do that, print both reset and boot zero buttons. Then release reset button, then release boot zero button. In the pop-up window, tap OK and open the app. 
Press init chipset. Press on blue cube. Select vendor Martin Loren and choose last version of firmware 4HC402. Press flash firmware and wait for erasing and writing data. If you want to download firmware with PC and you use uh, CH340 chip, you must manually install driver for Windows, link in the description. Now check that converter is properly identified. To do that press win plus r, type dev mgmt.msc and press enter. In ports section find device and remember com number. Download and install STM32Q programmer, link also in the description. Open it. Wire STM32 module and uh, USB com converter according to the wire diagram, like previously. Enter in microcontroller's load mode. To do that, press both reset and boot zero buttons, then release reset button, then release boot zero button. In the program, choose UR COM port and press connect. You will see device memory and MCU information. Press open file and choose earlier downloaded firmware, then click download and wait some time. The another one, maybe more simple way, is use device firmware update mode. Connect board to the phone with USB-C to USB-C cable or with USB-C to USB-A cable and OTG. Press reset and but zero buttons, release reset and then boot zero button. Open STM32Q programmer and choose USB. Press connect. Then, like previously, open binary file and download it to the memory. This is also could be done with uh, smartphone and uh, STM DFU USB application. The most simple method for me is using programmer debugger ST-Link. No need to press any buttons. Just open programmer, choose ST-Link and press connect. Open binary file and download it. With smartphone it is also possible just use uh, OTG cable and uh, Z Flasher STM32 application that you can find in Google Play. Download HScope application from Google Play. Now you already can connect oscilloscope to the phone and test it. The ideal way is use USB-C to USB-C cable and phone with the same connector. But if your cell phone has obsolete micro USB, you just need OTG cable in additional. Before using your oscilloscope, you need to tune virtual ground by to zero by rotation resistor on the PCB. So look at the line and rotate resistor. To do calibration zero level, go to settings, calibration, calib zero LVL, choose channel, shortcut probes and press continue. The value for all range will be saved. Press on blue cube, choose PWWM and connect channel's input to the rectangular PWM pole. Now you can adjust pulse width and frequency, but we had do this for set fronts to rectangular form. You can do this by rotation adjustable capacitor, use ceramic screwdriver if possible. Do the same with both channels. Now I have got Android oscilloscope, so let's do some tests. Another STM32 helped me to generate PWM signal with 50% uh, duty cycle and defined frequency. So I start with 10 Hz. Now 100 Hz, 10 kHz, 100 kHz, 200 kHz. 400 kilohertz, 666 kHz and 1 MHz. But uh, we have two channels, it's really good. So I connect RC differentiator to the previously created signal and hook up output to the second green channel. So with uh, two channels it is really really good to see simultaneously input and output signals. If your probes have divider usually by 10, you can do another physic physics test. Just connect inductor and capacitor in parallel. You will get resonant circuit. 
also use multiplier by 10 in the program because you use external divider by 10. Turn on trigger for first channel and set threshold. Connect power supply to circuit for a moment. I used battery. And you will see damped oscillations. The frequency can be calculated if capacitance and inductance is known and compared to the measured real value. And uh, the last one uh, tests. Uh, I have got relaxation oscillator based on LM393 comparator. Two channels makes it possible to visualize output and the cups voltage. This circuit can be used for ceramic cups DC bias experiment. Now I have got two channel oscilloscope. Of course, the app needs license. That uh, was bought for 10 bucks. Also, PCB components were bought and time for building spent. But the most essential feature of this oscilloscope is possibility to connect ESP32 and get measurements through Wi-Fi. It can be very useful where long wire is hard or impossible. I have already got ESP module and the art wireless data transmission will be in the next part.